Hello, Joan. Hi, how are you? Nice to see you again. That's right. We did speak once, right, at the American Black Film Festival. Yeah, totally. How have you been? I'm doing great. How are you doing? Yeah, all right. Not bad. Like racing towards this Christmas finish line in what has been an extraordinary year. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, it's so like the last, last week or so of work coming up. But, no, all good otherwise. <laughs> great. Great. So... So uh, I am, I'm going to go ahead and take the news that uh, your short film, The Lapo is Fine, is doing very well. In fact, it got acquired, right, from yes. Netflix and HBO. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what is happening? It's, it's so exciting. It's, uh, we finished at the BFI London Film Festival, which was, again, a, a career highlight. And probably a week or so later, it was acquired by Netflix UK and Ireland. Um, and it's going to be on HBO, which was always the plan because of the short film award um, in the new year. So we're just preparing all of the deliverables for that at the moment. So, so how, so how, how does it feel that it, you know, these these two giants are took notice of your small little short film? It's am it's amazing. It, never in our wildest dreams did we think that it was going to have this impact. But I think you know the world being in the state that it's in and the message that this story brings, what I've been so surprised about how it's reached people from all over the world and the conversations that have come from that about their own experiences or how refreshing it was to see a young black girl in this position, central for, this, for the narrative of this film, um, the energy behind it, the music, how they felt afterwards. And I think when you're an artist, entering into those conversations is so great because it doesn't belong to us anymore. It's sort of out there, the people. And I think what's wonderful about these platforms is that it means people can see it and, and, and have their own conversation starters around it. Well, let's, I, I've seen the short film, not once, not twice, but, you know, multiple times already. <laughs> so, because it's, it's, a, it's a lovely short film. Not to mention, <laughs> we're, we're talking to each other again about the same short film. So let, let's go ahead and reiterate what message you, you are hoping that people actually get from watching your short film. Yeah, I think, you know, I think the message behind it is, a, is an encouragement, really, to sort of own and celebrate your identity, regardless of, you know, what background you are, what color your skin is. We, we, we spend our lives battling against that and trying to conform to what other people are asking us to. And if we're able to sort of like, put our marker in the sand earlier about who we want to be we sort of save so much heartache and it is the human condition that sometimes that doesn't happen and it's completely natural when that does happen but it's to sort of encourage more of that and you know we've spent all of our time this year being by ourselves right? <laughs> confronting who we are so I think we've learned a lot about ourselves haven't we this year so going forward into 2021, if, this, if the message of this film says anything, it says decide who you want to be for this period, because that can also change as well, and, and, and be it proudly, be it proudly, and, and believe that you, the you that you are, is enough. Absolutely. We, all, we always enjoy that, those positive messages, especially during a year like this. Now... I guess uh, one of the big questions is, did you actually experience the same things as, uh, you know, Dolly did, Delapo did in, in this film? Yeah, it's interesting. In, in, in different ways, absolutely. Because I think that if you, if you exist in an environment like we talk about and the, what, that wasn't built for you, you enter that space, particularly when you're young, feeling quite um, naive and rightly so that this is your space and you inhabit it. And the minute you realize it, it's like the world around you crumbles. Um, so there were so many times that I have been that Chibundu Anuzo, the co-writer of this piece, Itosha Hilton, we're also black women in this arts industry. There are so many times that you arrive at an event or on set or from uh, schooling. So I went to Cambridge University, a very traditional British university. There are so many times you're the only person in that space that looks like you. And as such, the behaviors that come from that um, are a reminder that you don't quite fit into that world. And I think there's been stuff in my experiences from schooling 
and also things that I've experienced in the industry when you go to a party or you're pitching an idea to somebody and this is their first time they've heard a story at all like this um, from the other things that they tend to commission. Um, so I think, I think we all have those moments and sometimes they make you feel like an imposter but other times you sort of realize that this space would benefit and populate if there was more difference within it. Now, cultural wise, because uh, I'm, I'm from the United States and I'm speaking to you where you're from the United Kingdom. Culture wise, I, you know, coming from my perspective, I, Cal, especially California, I thought we were a little bit more open in terms of, you know, the, the styles and so on, but I'm not sure what, what it is over there across the, you know, the big pond. Um, is it more acceptable or they still have, you know, sort of like this stigma of, 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 of this kind of stuff? Yeah, it's quite interesting. So there, I mean, even this week alone, there's been a lot in the news about it. And during, during this period of, of lockdown and COVID-19, there've been various shows and also petitions about young black girls with Afro hair being sent home from school and people trying to do like the change positions so that we can speak about it in parliament and actually like make this uh, an issue of discrimination, which it is. And only yesterday, a group of, a group of young women uh, have founded something called the Halo Co Code. The mm -hmm. Halo Code, they go and speak to lots of different organizations and ask them to commit to a more inclusive workplace. And Unilever yesterday have signed onto that code. So a massive organization have said, actually, do you know what? We completely agree. We have no idea why, why one in five uh, black women feel pressured to straighten their natural Afro hair. And so as such, we are going to say that we are a company that is going to stand up against that and change that for the better. So it, it sort of feels like we're, we're, in the, we're in a movement, which it feels amazing that this film is a conversation uh, support for because this, it, it hasn't been acknowledged. These are things that have been going on, um, particularly for whether you're at school or whether you then go into the workplace. And you've, often black women have felt that they have to change themselves in order to fit into that world. So it's so positive. And the, these women, they're young as well that have created this halo code. And I can feel, and what I'm reading is that they're going around to various industries and they're going, will you sign up to this? Because if I tell you these stats, you would be surprised that that is our experience. And now people are starting to come through. And when one big company like that does it, the rest have to follow. You know, what's actually funny is that um, speaking to you for the second time, I have not seen your hair. <laughs> 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 you, 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 you have the headgear. So, so, the, so the only time I've ever seen any type of hair was you in the film, which was the uh, straight hair. So what, what, what is actually your real, real hair? So my hair is an afro. My hair is a huge afro. Um, and, and in that film, Daisy wears a wig. Um, but that's all, part of, that's all part of the world that she's had to exist in, right? And actually, you know, I do love a little head wrap, I won't lie, um, because it... it, it, it um, it's an expression of myself, you know? And, and particularly in these, you, when, we, when we've spoke, we've always been in this lockdown situation. <laughs> and it's really brilliant because it allows me to sort of protect my hair and also uh, give an expression of who I am. But you're quite right. Maybe one day, maybe the next time we speak, I'll make <laughs> sure, I'll make sure that you see the afro. <laughs> No, no, I, I just had to bring that up because it's funny is because we're, we're talking about a short film about the hair and and you have your head wrapped both at both times <laughs> because that's what black women do right we have so many and i think the film isn't really saying that one is better you can absolutely decide to have change your wigs every week if you like have your afro hair out have braids with black women it's what we do but that we should never be doing it because we've been pressurized to and, well, and we're told that it that it's not acceptable so yeah, so yeah. Listen, every time we speak, I'll give you a different look. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? It, it, it should always be the choice of the individual, not the society in, in this case. Um, one of the things that uh, we didn't talk about last time was the name Dilopo. Uh, mm -hmm. where, where did that name actually came from for the title? Yeah, it's wonderful. Well, it's, it, it's in there. It's in the, it's in the, what started off as a short story that Chibundu wrote. 
um, and that was called Sunita. And it was, it was, it was called Sunita because the lovely Indian character that we see, that's her name. And in the short story, uh, Dolapa would dream about this Indian girl constantly thinking, whose hair is it that I'm wearing? And then she'd wake up and she'd be in her boarding school. When we were doing the sort of the screenplay of it, that adapted and that changed. And when we did the edit, we actually realized that the moment was so small with the Indian girl when it happens in the woods. Um, and that we actually chose some scenes and some angles where you don't actually hear her name. So suddenly we were left to kind of go, actually the film can't be called Sunita anymore. And we were working it through and figuring out what it was. And it was our editor, Zana Ward Dixon, who she was obviously spending hours looking at stuff. And she went, could it be the last line of the film? And it just dropped in all of us because the lapot is fine can mean so many things, you know? The name is fine. I am fine. You know, like, and, and that um, this, is, this is who I am walking into this interview as the last moment, and that's cool. And it's accepted as well by the interviewee, uh, by the interviewer. And so actually it, it ended up being a wonderful title that meant all of the things that we wanted this film to resonate. Yeah, and, um, and the name itself, because of the Del Delapo name, you yeah. basically <laughs> had the character present different versions of the name, Dola as a nickname or uh, Daisy, mm. I'm not Daisy, excuse me, Dolly, mm. as, um, you know, basically the ad adapted name. Why did you want to bring that issue up uh, for it? Because it kind of goes hand in hand with, with the hair. Sure, sure, sure. And, and you're totally right. The name is, uh, it's, it's a Nigerian name. And what we wanted to explore by those other names are almost like the Western versions that can reduce a name. You know, Dolly and Dollop were never really names that were even, you know, Dolly is given to her by Daisy and Dollop was probably given to her by one of her school friends. So it was never a name that she created for herself. And so we kind of wanted to explore that in the same way we explore the wig. What happens if people know your name to be one thing and they choose not to use it? And then you adopt that name, but it never quite sits right. So I think we kind of wanted to explore that. And I've spoken to people who, who have names that people have done that to throughout their life, regardless of where they're from. And when they've watched the film, they've said, gosh, that, that really resonated with me because even at work, I don't say my name or it's not pronounced correctly, or it is some sort of nickname that's ultimately a, a westernized nickname. It's not even a nickname from my country of origin. Um, and what it takes to then sort of, sort of take that, reown that name, you know, to sort of take that name and go, actually, this, this, is, this is my name. I need to inhabit it. And I need to say to people when they try and do another version, no, no, this is the only name in which I use. And I think we wanted to explore that because so many people go on a journey with that. But I remember, you know, you, we listen to people like Uzo Aduba and my mom as well used to say things like, if they can say Tchaikovsky, you know, if, if, if they can say um, any, anybody else, Michelangelo, if they can say your name. Is it, if these things are a choice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if they don't know how to say it, they can ask. It's, it's very, there's a very polite way of saying, I don't want to mispronounce your name. Um, so do you mind saying it first? You know, these things are a choice that are made up of for many things around race and class that we all kind of experience, but actually, we were given a name for a reason. That's right. You know? that, that, that is a great message because, uh, because I, I do recall, you know, decades ago, it, you know, certain names have certain connotations that go against, you know, when you're trying to apply for a job. But now, culturally, like over here in the United States, people are sticking to their original names rather than, you know, applying by changing their names, you know, for resumes and, and stuff. Yes, 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 yes. Also because you see as well, like the whole for, for putting it on your resume that we have stats of how people's, because they have the name that they have, the resume hasn't been looked at. We know all of the implications that that brings, but to sort of become somebody else doesn't feel true either. So it's, it's, a, it's a real tension point. And hopefully as a world, we're, we're moving to a more to a place of acceptance in relation to that. But in a way it has to start with us. Because if we say that is my name, then there's no other name that they can call us. 
I, I think that is actually changing, especially during with the yeah. acting industry. I know yeah. I have no, I have noticed uh, a lot more people are more accepting of their original names rather than you know switch switching to you know more westernized name. Yeah, and and you see it like in Dolapo, you see the accents that are in the Yoruba language that we use, you know, um, and so and and that, and that's very indicative. And I, I've got lots of sort of. Nigerian, British Nigerian actor friends that are bringing the alphabet into the, into the way their name is written on anything that they do. And it's really beautiful to see because people then know that it, it does have to be said in a certain way. You know, the language is tonal. So as such, these the accents and the dots that are used are there to inform us on what the sound is and to get the real beauty of what that name is as well. Excellent. Well, let, let, let me uh, start to, to wrap things up. Obviously, you know, we always have standard questions when we, when, when we conduct these interviews, but you were in the movie as an actress, which is quite, quite an experience um, for, for you. Why did you want to be in the movie like this after writing? I, yeah, there was just, what I love, when I, whenever I look at parts, I, I just go, am I, am I really, am I pulled in here? What, what, is, what is exciting about this role? And, and writing, uh, the Daisy character, I actually went, gosh, she's complex. There's so much to her in terms of what she brings. It's one scene that you see her and then you have a scene with her on the phone. But she's so, um, oh, can, can you still hear me? Yeah, I can Daisy. still hear you. I can still hear you. Hello? I can still hear you. Hello? Ah, brilliant. <laughs> it just it just froze for a bit. I think any any part that I, I look at or that it, it's normally a character that stays with me. I, I kind of look at it and I said, no, 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 I want to sort of help produce this film and I want to be one of the writers on it. And she just kept coming back to me. Because there's there's a complexity of experience there, because you could look at her at one in one vein and go, oh my God, she's an absolute villain, which so many people have said to me. But then you look at her look at her in another vein and go, actually, you can understand why she's saying that, because she has lived a certain experience where people have not tolerated somebody self showing their self-expression, you know, and sitting within who they want to be. She has had to sort of have these armor points. You see it in the way that she dresses, in the hair that she wears. So she genuinely is trying to uh, offer some advice so that Olapo isn't burnt in the way that perhaps she was and she yeah. wasn't given that space but time moves on and of course what Olapo's journey shows us is that actually it mustn't always be that way and we have to find a way that we can we can breathe in those spaces a little bit more so I just found the world of the, the daisy as a character and the world in which she'd inhabit to be incredibly nuanced and I had to pitch the director to say to Tosha I'm really sorry, I wasn't expecting this, but I think I'd like to play her. <laughs> and I remember at the time I was in my, was in my tracksuit bottoms running around doing the productions kind of thing. And she's like, Joan, you look really young normally. Like this, this is not, this woman is a woman. And I went, but I'm also a shapeshifter, trust me on this. And we sort of spoke back and forth and I sort of tell her about what I thought about the role. And when I arrived on set in all of our outfits, she said, Oh, wow, you are Daisy. <laughs> so it was one of those moments of the actor head coming on, like really pitching for a role that they really wanted, even though it was within the project that I was creating. But yeah, I'm, I'm really thankful and fortunate for, for that opportunity too. I, I think that's great. Well, one last, one, one last thing. I, I, I've, I've asked you the qu same question before, but obviously last time we spoke, I believe it was late August or early September or something like that. So how, how have you been staying sane and creative since, <laughs> since then? Very difficult to stay sane in these times. <laughs> um, but uh, I, I've just been diving in, you know, and, that, that, and it varies from week to week. You know, I think we have to be kind to ourselves in this time. There's some days that you wake up and you've got lots of creativity um, that you want to get down on the page and other days where you just need to take a little bit of a break. But um, where possible, I'm, I'm working on, I have two TV series currently in development um, and I just picked up producing a feature film. And there's a wonderful uh, network in the UK, which is run by the BFI and BAFTA. And I've just joined their cohort for 2021. 
which has writers, directors, producers, cinematographers, and it's a basically a year long training program, sort of help develop these ideas and, and, and to move them forward because I've started something now um, and I've, I have no idea where it's going, but I'd really like to put all of the work that it will take to figure out where that might be. Good things are happening for you. It lo looks like you're get, getting set up for uh, 2021, which is great, <laughs> Joan. I, I really appreciate this conversation. Thank you for uh, speaking with me again. And next time, I can't wait to see what look you've got. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Each time something new. But it, it was wonderful to speak to you again. And thank you so much for, for loving this film and watching it and, and wanting to uh, get into the conversation on it as well. I appreciate it. Hey, not a problem. Thank you. Next time, Joe. Next time. Take care. Bye, bye now. Bye.